All right, let's wrap it up with products you can buy that contains estrogen. Mm. Um, like we mentioned, a lot of this is prescription. So, mm -hmm. uh, but nowadays with a lot of teloderm type of work, mm -hmm. there are some brands out there that you can actively search for and pursue just online. And if you Google estrogen face cream, there are three that comes up, and they actually happen to represent what we think of as three different tiers of product you can see in this category. The first one is the Alloy M4 face cream. This one uses 0.3% estriol, so in line with all the studies we shared during the meet, they actually did their own clinical test, benching it against the 0.01% estradiol. Mm. Uh, they did, yes, a group, uh, they did their own clinical, yep. They did 30 per group and for 12 weeks. They measure hydration with a corneometer and show that both groups are, um, both groups show an on par level of improvement. N equals 30 per group for three groups. So it is the 0.3% alloy estriol cream in one group, uh, a 0.01% estradiol cream, and also a placebo. So like juice triple threat here. Yes. Uh, so yes, they measure hydration with a corneometer and show on par improvement between the estriol and estradiol group, but they didn't see improvement in the placebo group. They showed that. Elast What's interesting here is that they actually showed that elasticity wasn't effective, but mm. I should mention that this is a more standard cosmetic styled um, uh, cosmetic length uh, clinical that's only done for 12 weeks, whereas mm -hmm. in the papers we found it's done for six months. So uh, clearly this is something that might take a little longer. And they also did expert evaluation and show on par improvement between the, est the two estrogen groups uh, in terms of radiance and skin roughness. And again, there is no unwanted side effects. And what I find to be really neat for the um for the study that we didn't kind of cover in the we didn't cover in the meat section is they mentioned very specifically that there is no changing unwanted age-related pigmentation, mm. which is often thought about as a potential side effect of topical hormones. This clinical deserves a gold star. This is an amazing yes. study. So good yeah. on you, Alloy. I will totally champion this product. No problem. <laughs> It is an easy one to root for. They thought of everything, thought of a little bit more than we even think of. I think uh, I would have been happy if it's just bench against a um, bench against a placebo, but I went the extra mile and benched against the estradiol. Mm -hmm. So definitely a good one you can consult your doctors for. I believe they also can connect you with the Teloderm um, for this cream. Next, we have Muesli. Muesli also uses a 0.3% estrogen cream. Um, they also talk about how this cream also has vitamin C and HA, and it's a unique blend of ingredients, blah, blah, blah. But no studies have been done on Muesli. They're just relying on estrogen being a prescription ingredient and the coattails of other people study. I think this is a more, uh, probably more standard approach, I would say. Mm -hmm. um, but compared with the alloy, I will have to root for the alloy who actually sure. tested their specific product. Also, I oh, sorry, I was just going to mention that Alloy, um, the general price range is around $50, and then Muesli, mm -hmm. you're looking at around $33. I don't find mm -hmm. that price point to be that wide in gap. I was expecting, like, you know, pharmaceutical price range every time you get a clinical like that. But so for yeah. me, I, I think there's a clear win winner. Um, mm -hmm. I just, I think, you know, let's be real. Like, we're all using vitamin C and a vitamin C serum. We don't necessarily need that in addition to, you know, the estriol here. So I wouldn't use that as, like, a clear deciding factor in choosing one or the other. Yeah, 100%. Um, lastly, if you Google estrogen face cream, this comes up. It's a brand called Impel. Um, it's positioned, and I should mention it is clinically tested for older women who are peri or postmenopausal, but it does not contain estrogen or estradiol. It's actually positioned as uh, a moisturizing cream for older women without the estrogen. It's actually a retinol and peptide blend, which uh, I should mention <laughs> that uh, retinol, it is important to, you know, shout it from the roof, this is retinol. So if you're not used to it, you can, you still need onboarding mm -hmm. times and all the typical disclosures, yada, yada, yada. I just find it to be a little bit like, uh, it's just a thing to take note, right? This type of stuff comes up, but just give it a, another read. <laughs> slightly misleading we should mention that you know if the objective is to treat the symptoms of peri and postmenopause like um this is not really the goal for that even though the clinical does probably target these women if anything my takeaway would be like keep up the retinol like during this period while you're using your topical estriol estradiol you know like that that would be my takeaway 
Yeah, so to sum this episode up, if you're in that age range, um, estriol or estradiol creams are definitely worth exploring. You should yeah. talk to your doctors about it, especially if you're suffering from severe dryness. Yeah. Um, I should mention that I haven't seen a lot of people talking about it like that, but there are some forums and some um some blogs. Oh hi. Hello. <laughs> Say hi. Okay, you don't want to say hi. <laughs> anyway, I have seen some forums where um, women in their 40s have talked about exploring this realm. Mm. I haven't seen anything that suggests that women that are much younger or your pre-menopause should think about it. There's no, I didn't see anything, uh, any testing that shows that it can be beneficial from a preventative angle. Yeah. So I probably wouldn't think about it like that at all. Uh, totally agree. I think that... Um... It's it's very clear they are th the specificity of how they're testing. We should stay within the specificity of the age range that is defined. So definitely try. Uh, and ultimately, if you don't you don't have to listen to us, go ahead and ask your derm or your OB. And finally, I think there is something we should also mention is you know a lot of the studies we share they might sound like they're you know from twenty years ago. Um, we do share what we find to be the most relevant or we find the clinical test to be done really well. But we will say that we, you know, as mentioned before, this category is starting to pick up in research again. Yeah. I think they're starting to realize like a lot of women out there are being like, hey, uh, what about me? You guys are forgetting about me. So that's a really good sign. They're actually exploring more of the isoflavone. So you might hear about the hormone like ingredients that are coming from like things like soy. Um, so we would say that this room there's definitely buzz. There's definitely testing, um, but a lot of it still is pretty new. And this is a uh, general territory that Gloria and I are keeping tabs on, and we will share in the next in the near future. So yeah, stay tuned for that. Yeah. Last but not least, if you already have an estrogen cream in your routine or you're thinking about adding one, sorry, uh, <laughs> can you hear Kumo purring into the mic? Uh, Everyone's like, Ooh, uh, "What is that uh, vibrating?" <laughs> that is my gato. Uh, and anyway, Kumo. Chill. Uh, last but not least, um, this seems uh, topical estrogen seems pretty mild, pretty vanilla. Mm -hmm. There is nothing preventing you from using it alongside all your other topicals. Yes. Like you mentioned a lot of a lot of brands and a lot of papers will champion actually using both um, the retinoids to target um, photo aging and the topical estrogen to combat chrono aging yeah. aspects. So that's that's a go. And I think that. <laughs> Before my cat chews up my mic, that about sums up this episode. We should mention that next episode is the last episode eee! of the year. We did it. We made it to the end. Yeah. So let us know how you feel about the content this year. Let us know what you want us to talk about next year. We might do a couple of... Uh, Victoria and I are going to go on hiatus after the sum up episode, but uh, we are already brainstorming about next year, what we want to keep the same, what we want to do differently. Yeah. So let us know your thoughts down below as well. So 